Oh, there we go. Yeah, there now it's recording. All right. Okay, so I asked Claire and Terry to kind of host these call for calls for us for a couple reasons. Um, I didn't know just with everything still kind of being in a really fluid situation with my family, I didn't know if I would always be able to get on here. Um, and I didn't know if I would be in the right headspace to host them. Um, Amber Sheffield, your highlights look fantastic, by the way. Oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just kind of wanted, and I know each of y'all that are actually on this call, I know all of y'all very well, but there are going to be some that watch this back that I don't know as well. And so I just kind of wanted to give some background um, as to why I really wanted to do this book and just different things like that. Um, so as all of you know, um, my niece, Allie, went to be with Jesus on January 7th. Um, and it was obviously very sudden. There was an ATV accident, yada, yada, yada. And I was actually just right before we got on this call, I was watching a sermon um, actually by Tom Messer, Amber, um, our old pastor at Trinity in Jacksonville, Florida. And um, it was a message my best friend Christy had sent me. They go to church there. And he's, his whole sermon was, why do bad things happen to good people? And he mentioned, you know, my dad got on this flight from Dallas to Jacksonville, going to do a very noble thing. And by the time his flight landed, he finds out that two of his granddaughters have been in this accident and one of them has died. And why do things like this happen? And, and then he said something that um, really got me to thinking, and this all happened, like, literally, I haven't even had time to talk to Jonathan about this yet, but... He worded it a lot better than I'm going to be able to, but he said, maybe instead of, he, he wasn't relating this to my dad, let me clear that up, but he was going on further in the sermon and he said something about, um, you know, instead of focusing on what we've lost or the bad things that are happening, let's be grateful and thankful for what could have happened that didn't happen. And when he said that, I thought, oh Lord, what if we had planned three funerals, you know, and what if Sarah Beth wasn't here either? And what if, you know, all of these different things that there have been moments when I've had that thankfulness, but it hasn't been an overwhelming thankfulness. And I was texting with Claire and Christy today and just telling the man, it's been a really rough day today. Um, and it definitely just like, it comes in waves, like you hear people say, and then all of a sudden you for me, it's always the hardest when I very first wake up um, because it's fresh all over again. It's, it's reality all over again. Um, so I really wanted to do this book. I um, spent a little bit of time in Allie's room just a few days after the accident. Terry was actually there with me for the second time I went in. The first time it was just me and Jonathan. Um, and we had to go over to the house. That's when the... Um, news people were coming out to interview Jana and Steve and Jana of course needed clothes and stuff so we went over to their house and it was like is this what she wants is this what she wants and we packed like 14 sweaters and she only needed one of them and yeah it was chaos but it was funny and I asked Terry and Christy I said do you want to see Allie's room and they said of course so we went in there and I was kneeling down by her bed and reached over and was grabbing. I said, look at her Bible, you know, and, and I showed them in the front of her Bible under marriages where she had written mine and Jonathan's wedding. And I don't know, just to see that, to see her, my name and her handwriting, there was just something really sweet about that. And then she had this book um, there on her nightstand. And what caught my eye about this book was this was, I mean, this was before the funeral. It wasn't even a week after she had passed. And the subtitle of this book, Five Stories of Unlikely Women Who Changed Eternity. That's what caught my eye. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's what Allie's doing right now. Um, the day after her death, um, my sister had texted our pastor and said, preach the gospel. He was, he was in this, and he still is in this, um, sermon series called 42 he just turned 43 and so these are his 42 life lessons that he's that he's pulled out some of them are really practical one of them yesterday was don't be a jerk which is <laughs> i want to watch but that one it actually was a fantastic sermon 
very, very applicable, very practical. Um, and so that morning he got up and completely changed his sermon. I encourage you all to watch that one too. Um, and that's what he did. He preached the gospel and 24 souls came to Jesus just in that service. And this was, you know, when, when this book and this subtitle caught my eye, it was before the funeral. It was before all these people had texted in. It was before we knew that 20,000 people had watched the live feed from 19 different countries and 300 and something people had texted in that they had received Christ and all of this stuff. But I thought to myself, those 24 souls, their, their eternal destinies are different, completely altered um, because our pastor preached the gospel, not because of Allie, because of how much Allie loved Jesus and how much Jesus loved Allie. I always want to make sure that that gets across really well, that it's not because of Allie, it's all because of Jesus. Um, the reason, and y'all may have seen Jana post this, the reason Allie even had this book, did you guys see this? Yeah. Was um, she wanted a bunch of books for Christmas, and they were books like, I'm sure along the lines of like um, – a Hunger Games kind of series and Harry Potter. She loved books like that. She read all of those, but she loved books like that. She would read and read and read like nobody's business. Um, and Jana said, okay, I'm going to get you all these books, but I'm also going to get you some of my books and you have to read those as well. So she kind of got stuck reading this book. But then once she got into it, she, she really enjoyed it. Um, so I just, I don't know. I just wanted to kind of open up with that and just share you guys where my heart is. I don't know that this is plexus income producing activity, um, but I feel like it is income producing just maybe in another way. And I feel like this will help our team. Um, those of us that get on these calls, especially will help our team bond and grow better. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not Plexus approved because I'm literally sitting here drinking a Diet Coke while I do this call. Um, so <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to share that with y'all and um, just tell you guys I appreciate y'all doing this with me. I think it's going to be super duper fun um, and we're going to learn a whole lot. So I got my pen ready, my notes ready, my book ready, and my giant Bible. So I don't, I don't have just my little one. I have my giant one. So. <laughs> Makes you more spiritual the bigger your Bible is. So, <laughs> or the bigger your hair is. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Um. Wow. Um. Claire, you want to open us up in prayer? Sure. I would love to. <clears throat> Father in heaven, um, God, we just come to you grateful. Um, we know that there are lots of things to, um come to you about lots of hurts, lots of fears and anxieties, um, in everyone's lives right now. But, um, Lord, we just want to say thank you for, for Jesus, um, for your example of love to us, um, and how we see that example of love woven throughout these stories that we're going to be discussing. Um, but I pray that you will, uh, transform our hearts through talking about this, that you will um, get us together more tightly with you, more tightly with one another. And um, God, I just pray that um, as part of Allie's legacy, that even those of us who already know you would experience another level of life change um, through this book and um, through the revelations that we learn about you and just about ourselves and our relationship with you and through the process. Um, Lord, we love you. Uh, we are so thankful for your son, Jesus, and his sacrifice for us on the cross to bring us back to you. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, man. And it, just real quick, before we end, I want us to pray again. And if we want to do, like, prayer requests from everyone. So that, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Awesome. Okay. Well, just, um, I'm just going to give you guys a brief little how we thought we would run this, how we would have this light laid out. Um, Claire and I looked at it, and although there's only five women to discuss, these books or these little sub books in this big book are kind of long, and so we thought that we would split it up and do one woman, one chapter um, in two weeks. 
because the chapters are about 100 pages. So we thought, you know, 100 kind of sounds intimidating, although once you start reading it, it was really kind of hard to put it down. But, um, and actually, I've read all of chapter or the first story, and it's like, I got to make sure that I don't give the ending away because I know we're only going to do the first half of it. But anyway, so we'll take two weeks to do one story. So this first story, and somebody tell me how you say this girl's name. Tamar? Tamar? Tamar. Yeah, Tamar. I always said Tamar. Tamar. Thank you. Yeah. I was like, Tamar, Tamar. All right, Tamar. So um, what I noticed, and it was so interesting, I was telling Claire about it today. I'm like, well, you know, I had a hard time. There are these discussion mm -hmm. questions in the back at the end of each story. But some of them I liked and most of them I didn't. So I went out online trying to find some other discussion questions because I do not believe in reinventing the wheel. If somebody else can do the work for me, that's exactly what I do. And um, I couldn't find it anywhere. I was like, darn it. So these are the questions. I mean, I couldn't find any supplemental questions, discussion questions. And so um, I thought what we could do was kind of just talk about what jumped out at you what really just hit you hard in the middle of your soul as you read, and then maybe talk a little bit about these discussion questions as well. You know, maybe not all of them. Some of them are pretty factual about the, um, the history and what was going on with the lineage and all that. And some of them are a little more thought provoking. And I kind what, of- What page are those questions on? Um, they start on page, uh, 87. As I said, I've got a mark. Yeah, about 87. And then yeah, 87, 88. The same, um, format for every single story. They have the um, <clears throat> reading room. Every single story is pretty much the same format. And it's yeah. a little bit of a synopsis or a review about what those questions cover. Kind of like a little cliff notes almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like that she does that because I was reading a little seek and find thing before that, and she was ba she's basically saying, you know, how much of this Tamar story is biblical, and she's like, well, seek it out for yourself. So it's like a little Bible study exactly. to see really what the scriptures say, and I appreciate that because I was trying to tell my husband about the story of Tamar because he was like, what book are you reading? <laughs> and, uh, and as he was asking questions, I was like, well, I don't know what part is the Bible part is this story so yeah and I have to say as I was on the internet searching for other questions that I read a lot of reviews or blogs or gals that that's what they do is review these Francine River books and that was one of the cautions they said was you mm -hmm. know to to be very um cognizant of she adds some fiction into it. And so who are we to know whether that is true or not? true? And honestly, when you look at this story in your, your biggest Bible, you know, <laughs> a few, it's just a few um, verses. It's not a hundred mm -hmm. pages But I love for me. I love having that picture in my mind because that's how I understand history. That's right. You know, and as long as we recognize that she has taken liberty to add more to it, but I'm sure she's, re I know she's reputable and know that she does her research as well. Right. So I like it. I like it a lot. So mm -hmm. I just thought we'd start from the very beginning. What if y'all, if y'all haven't ever read Redeeming Love, have y'all read that one? Yes. Oh yeah. Multiple okay, times. Let's, let's get through this first, but oh my goodness, it is... That's a book. I, when I start reading it, even though I've read it multiple times, I cannot put it down. I always finish yeah. reading it in one sitting, and I'm up till about four o'clock in the morning reading it. Is that by the same author? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's what she does is, I mean, you have to know that her writing is fiction, but it's based on actual biblical characters. Right. And I was just sitting here thinking as Terry was talking that, hey, right now, Allie actually knows how much of this is truth or not. And she's up there talking with Tamar and going, hey, I read your story. I read your story. And is it really 100 yeah. pages or just about five pages? Right, right. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. She knows the answers to that. Yep. Oh, I love it. Um, oh, there was one other. She In these blogs that I was reading, there's another series, The Lion. Oh, crud. 
Oh yes, and yes I, can't, so I know exactly good. which one you're talking about, and it's so good. And it, so it's not based really on Bible characters, but it's based on Bible history. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it'll take you a while to get through that. There's like three books. I actually listened to it um, on road trips, okay. and oh my gosh, it's it's so 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 good. I'm sure if you put in Francine Rivers and Lion. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called right now. Me neither, but there anyway. were a lot of people that talked about how fabulous those were, too. Mm-hmm. That'll be my next one. Okay, so, I mean, I'm just wanting y'all to tell me what jumped out at you. I know Claire kind of showed me, told me a few things this morning, or this afternoon, that we kind of just wrote different things out in the, well, I'm just, if okay, I want to start or you want me to? No, it doesn't matter. I mean, I can just share a little bit of what I told Terry this morning. Um, I just feel like as I was, what really hit me as I was reading through this was just how applicable her struggle, you know, early, even early on when her father was selling her the bridal price to this Hebrew family. Um, And then the struggle that she goes through with, each husband I feel like that struggle is just so applicable as far as uh, not knowing what was going on being fearful and being anxious and um, and still even though like still choosing to trust you know she still humbled herself she still um, she trusted her authority and eventually she starts to trust the Lord um, at when she sees you know she, I guess, calls him the God of Judah. But um, one thing that I pointed out to uh, Terry that really caught my eye was on page 11. It's the second paragraph from the bottom when her father is trying to bring her out to see if she's approved for the bridal price. And she's talking about how she understands her role in all this, but understanding didn't make it any easier. And I just felt like that sentence totally spoke to me about just what everyone that we know is going through, you know, Allie's situation and how that's affected all of the family, Um, you know, Terry losing her dad and losing her mother-in-law and just all these things happening out there and how it's just, it's nice to see this example of someone who, you know, like all of, you guys are doing like working through it, even though understanding doesn't make it easier and it's still really difficult. Just this example of, you know, trust and submitting to the Lord. Um, And one of the things that it talks about is the name Tamar. And it really spoke to me that uh, the description basically showed that, um, the date palm would still flourish even in hardship. And that was really beautiful to me of kind of what, what hardship should bring out of us. You know, do we flourish in, in at least our need for the Lord? You know, maybe we're not going to be the perfect Christian or whatever, because, you know, even right now I'm going through things that I'm very anxious about but does my need for the Lord flourish? And um, that just really hit me with the beginning of this part of the book. You know, Claire, as you were reading that paragraph, I had underlined it earlier, but then I stopped. But look at the very next sentence. It says, after all, she was the one being offered like a sacrificial lamb. And Mm -hmm. if you think about Jesus. Yeah, totally. You know, he was obedient, even though it was hard. I mean, all the the ultimate death he was yeah even though and he understood that he had to be the sacrificial lamb and yet didn't make it easy you know yeah out on the cross and and how jesus walking on this earth we we were the same thing we may not be the sacrificial lamb and yet it hurts and it's hard to understand it's hard it doesn't make it easy even though we understand the role that we have to play in it. Yeah. Yeah. And we thought of that whole Jesus part of it. Ah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) 
I hadn't thought about the whole Jesus part of it. Is no, don't, no, don't tell, don't tell, don't tell Allie that I forgot the Jesus. Part. That's funny. <laughs> you need to get a bigger Bible, too. Yeah, I better get a bigger Bible and bigger. Okay. <laughs> um, there's another part. You know, I'm so not focused a lot, but the role that Judah played in all this jumped out at me a lot. And I really don't usually focus on the bad guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I know the story is about Tamar, Tamar, whatever her name is. But um, on page, where is it, 32? Let's put my glasses on because I don't have my contacts in. I can't say that I need them or not. Um, yeah, it said, he was guilty and he knew it. And I think, you know, I think when we, when I, I can only speak for me, when I do things that are disappointing to you, or even disappointing to my husband, or disappointing to my children, or definitely disappointing to myself. I know it. Mm -hmm. And I feel guilty, not ridden with guilt, but I think that's the Holy Spirit speaking within us to convict us of saying, mm -mm, better job next time. Better mm -hmm. job. You can't, when you are convicted of the Holy Spirit, you can't take it. You just can't. And I don't know that that was, obviously it wasn't the Holy Spirit, because this was Old Testament. This wasn't the Holy Spirit whispering to him that he knew his guilt in the role that he played with his brothers, and he couldn't shake that. And I thought that part, you know, and we see throughout this whole story that that role that he played kept on revisiting him and revisited mm -hmm. his his children and his generations to come, and even the creepy wife that he married, and you know, all those kind of things. It's like, yeah. The sins of your father's 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 father. You know, I I remember telling my children this growing up. You know, um, you can't. You you're we're foolish to think that the decisions that we make only affect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our decisions affect so many people. And when someone will say, "Oh, well, you know, it's my whatever. I can do what I want." No, I call bunk on that because our decisions affect so many people. And Judas yeah. affected so many people. <clears throat> and he tried to run from it and he tried to hide it, hide it from hide it from himself even and he couldn't. I don't know. Those things that jumped out at me a lot. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what else? Katrina, did you have something you were gonna say? Um, I think the biggest thing that stood out to me it was how that Tamar was so persistent in going to Judah and asking about his God, even though he kept turning her down and he wouldn't tell her, she never gave up on that. And she still refused, um, you know, to, to follow her gods, you know, and to worship the gods that she had been brought up you know to learn about and things like that and she kept trying to learn about judah's god um no matter how much that door was slammed shut for her she did, she never gave up but she just continued she had that persistence to keep seeking after him when she was trying to find those answers that was um one of the things that stood out to me i i first read this book about i think it's been about five years ago when i first read it and i think that Tamar's story was one of them that really just stuck with me more than any of the others. I think maybe because there's so little written about her in the Bible, and yet this made everything become so real, and you really felt and mm -hmm. understood more of the situation of, of what these girls were placed in back in those days. You know, we just, we don't understand that culture unless you've studied mm -hmm. it and things like that. But to know how that culture worked and for, for people to come in and for the father to give their daughters away like that. And, you know, for them to pick up and go somewhere just at the spur of a moment like that and leave everything they knew behind and go to another family. And sometimes it was to try to make peace between families and things. At age 14. She was 14. Years yeah. At 14 years old. I mean, there's no way <laughs> I would have been ready for something like that at that age. And, and the maturity, the level of maturity that she showed in things, I think was just really amazing. Um, 
but that persistence, I think that was one of the things that really stood out to me um, was her persistence in, in seeking after and trying to learn about, about Judah's God and to find out more about him. That's good. Can we all just stop and give thanks that we don't know what those arranged marriages are like? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know who my dad would have set me up. <laughs> he had a while to work on it, but. That's funny. That is so funny. Did you guys notice the comparison that Judah made to Tamar and uh, Bathsheba, his wife, when he was talking about that? It's like page 15, the first couple paragraphs, and then he continues it like the end of the page over to page 16. But I just, I was reflecting on, you know, mm. if I were to put myself in a category, because he talks about, you know, it's, he's been stubborn and hate, he was stubborn and hasty in his decision for a wife. And now he was suffering for that. And how it says a stubborn woman was a curse upon a man. And then he talks about Tamar and... It just made me think, you know, who would I, who would I be like, you know, when, oh, sorry. I thought my thing propped up on pillows. Um, so I'm sure in different situations, I'm like both of them, truthfully. So. That's good. That is good. No, I hadn't really paid attention to that, but that's so true. I love, and this is really simple, but I love that this whole book started off with Genesis 37 and, you know, the story of Joseph and um, how it's within that story. And I don't know if she said, I can't remember if she says this in here, but it's within that story in Genesis 37 that what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that's what I see playing out. I see so much good playing out with what's happening with our family and with, with what's happening with, with Allie and everything. I also see a lot of pain there and a lot of suffering there and a lot of ache just as Joseph did, you know, and I know we're not really focusing on Joseph in this story, but I do love the story of Joseph. Um, and I can't, I think it was Terry that said this at the very beginning when, or no, it was Claire. She understood her role in all of it, but understanding didn't make it any easier. And I wrote that down. I mean, I underlined it in my book too, but I'm also trying to take notes. But um, that kind of sums up, I think, exactly, I know at least where I am right now. Like, I understand why this is happening, but or why this has happened, but understanding it doesn't make pain and the hurt and the ache just go away um and then there was something else um i thought of as you were talking about that sentence claire the sermon that i just listened to it's still fresh in my mind and he said something about you know it's um it's totally okay to question to ask god questions as long as you don't start to question god and who he is and I thought that was such a great way of putting it. Like, ask God all the questions you want to ask, um, but never question who God really is. That's where it, anyway, that's not really in the book. It's just fresh on my mind, and it kind of goes along with that. I understand my role, or I understand why this is happening, but it doesn't make it better. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that would be exemplified in how she portrays Tamar. <clears throat> you know, when she's going through this whole rigmarole of everything, she doesn't, she doesn't, she knows that the God of Judah is somehow in control of all this. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't know why, because it makes her look bad. <laughs> yeah, but poor thing. Poor thing. I know. But she knows that God is like, that he is strong enough to be in control of all of this. Yeah. Well, and and she doesn't know him personally, 
and she's seeking out that. And it just tells me that, that even non-believers who, I mean, eventually she does, but non-believe, we are all created with that void, with that hole in us that are, that is looking for more. And mm -hmm. so many people try to fill it with so many mm -hmm. things, but until we know Jesus, then th that void is still there. And so yeah. she, she kept on clinging to that and seeking that and wanting to know more about it because she needed that. And I think mm -hmm. that's where so many times people of our days today seek so many other things besides Jesus. But mm -hmm. they still, we are all created with that empty, that spot. I, I heard someone talk about, it's like a missing piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. There is only one piece of the puzzle that will fit in that spot. And it's mm -hmm. Jesus. But so many people are trying to cram other pieces that try to, you know, how when you try to shove a piece of a puzzle in and it won't fit. Yeah. It's like, yeah. But she's clinging to that. Mm-hmm. Um, here's some of the questions in this part back here in the back. I'm kind of like you, Amber. I love the story about Joseph and his brothers. It's like, yeah. I cannot... I think too, like, I always love rooting for the underdog, you know, <laughs> like, I could have cared less about that football game last night, um, but when I saw the Patriots, for, and I honestly don't even like the Patriots, but I don't really care about the Falcons, but when I saw how badly they were losing, I was like, oh, I'd be pretty cool if they made a comeback. And me and Sarah Beth went and sat in the hot tub and Jonathan came out and he was like, the Patriots won. I was like, what? That's always, like, I don't care about them at all. I just like to root for the underdog. And I mean, I think we can all agree that maybe in everyone but his father's eyes, Joseph was definitely the underdog. And um, I just, I don't know, I, I visualize how it must have been for him when his brothers came before him to ask for food and they didn't even recognize him. And anyway, sorry, I just love that story. I mean, look at this part on, it's part of the questions. It asks, it, it says, Judah had choices. What could he have done differently? And then it refers to this Proverbs 28, 13. It says, people who cover over their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and forsake them, they'll receive mercy. Mm. It says, had Judah confessed to God and to his father, the story would have ended there. However, he did not. Instead, he got married, and we know who he married. It would seem <laughs> that Judah was on a pathway of separation from truth. He chose to run and hide rather than to confront the real issues. He chose to handle things for himself rather than let God direct his path. And how often, I, that part about let God direct your path, how often do I try to handle things myself? Now, hopefully I'm not Judah throwing my brother in a well and then the merchants driving by, but I don't have a brother. I guess I'm safe there. But, but you know, he tried to handle things himself, and every time he did, he just made it worse, and he made it worse, and he made it worse, because he never confessed his sins. And it, like I said, it's like throwing that pebble in the pond and watching the ripple. It affected, yeah, he lost his boys, for Pete's sakes, because of his sins. Yeah. These questions, it says, how do you deal with jealousy or with conflict? Who wants to give their answer to that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm I'm Beth, we haven't heard from you tonight. You're the one. <laughs> I, I want to hear from you. <laughs> I actually, I am um, only, I just got the book. So I'm 24 pages in. So I'm like processing because I just read it today, like an hour ago. <laughs> so, but um, um, I don't know. <laughs> um, 24 pages is good. Yeah, it is. You're yeah. just getting it. Oh, I'm just pretty proud of myself. I'm like, man, I got to knock some of this out before we get on this call. So, yeah, I'm just going to be real with you. I am not a reader by heart. Like, I have to force myself to read to, like, help with network marketing and personal growth and all kinds of stuff. So when I got this book and saw how thick it was, I almost cried. 
<laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it's good. You're it's good. Yeah. It's good. It does draw you in. Like, I didn't want to put it down. So, yeah. yeah I'm, not, I'm the same way. I'm not a reader by heart at all. At all. And so this was, yeah, when I, that's part of why, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all, the um, switch on your brain book. Once I started getting into that, I was like, oh, snap, this thing is deep. Yeah. I and so when I saw this, I was like, it's really a big book, but I can handle this. Like, let's switch to that real quick. I have girls. I like, I can relate to these chicks. Yeah. yeah. But. Good. Okay. Well, how about this one? This one might be a little easier. It says, where do you turn with, where do you turn with life struggles? To yourself, to your family and friends? To comfortable patterns or to God? Mm. That's good. Ah. Mm. I can honestly say, and Claire knows this, um, for a long, long, long time, it was to friends. It was to, let me call this person, and then I'll call this person, and then I'll call this person. And then um, God put someone named well, back in the day, she was Claire Schwane in my life. And she kept telling me, I remember this phone call so vividly. I was going through something really rough, standing right here in my kitchen. Um, and she kept telling me over the phone, she said, Amber, focus on the truth. Focus on the truth. What is the truth? Because my mind, I have, I know I'm the only person in the world that does this, but I have the tendency to jump 10 steps ahead. And I'm going, well, what is this going to look like a week from now and two weeks from now and three weeks from now? Um, and if, if this whole thing with Ali has taught me anything, it's been, whoa, we've got to take this like a minute at a time. If you get too far ahead, it starts to be really freaky. Um, but she just kept saying, focus on the truth. And I would love to say that it was then that I, I went, okay, I'm going to go to God with all my issues. And I did start going to him more. Um, thank you, Claire. Um, but I've never, I've never, ever, ever felt the way that I feel right now in my life. I've never felt this kind of ache before. And I know all of y'all that are on this call know this, but if you're watching the recording, I don't have kids of my own. And I'm never going to try to pretend that I'm feeling the same kind of ache my sister is because that's ridiculous. That's her mama. Um, but those nieces and nephews are mine are the closest thing that I have to my own kids. And I know that that will change when God gives us kids and we are praying, believing that that's going to happen. But I've never felt ache like this before. I've never felt pain like this before. And the only comfort that I find right now is when I open this big, huge Bible. <laughs> um, the only time, and, and even still then, that brings tears. Terry sent me um, a little hanky that she intended. She wanted to have it before the service, before the funeral, and it just got here, so she mailed it to me, and it's in my Bible. Because even sometimes then, reading scripture and going to church even brings tears. They're most of the time good tears. Um, but... This is where I'm finding my comfort, and it, it's taken my 16-year-old niece and looking at her journals and how much, and, and listen, I don't ever want to make Allie sound like she's a saint, okay? Allie was not perfect. Um, she was probably the closest thing to a perfect, per, the perfect kid I've ever known, and Claire will testify to that, but I mean, she, Terry, you saw her room and how immaculate it is, but <laughs> She was not perfect. She's not God. And I never want to make her out to sound like she's a saint. But it honestly took me opening those journals of hers and seeing page after page after page after page of her personal devotion notes. This isn't something that she sat down and wrote out at church, you know, her sermon journal. This isn't something that 
you know, was a, a family devotional. This is something she did on her own. No one forced her to do this. And she's 16 years old. And I remember having a conversation with Terry a while back going, hey, I need you to, this was a long while back, but going, hey, I need you to hold me accountable for doing my devotions. Like, I'm 37. Why can't, why can't I go to God with my, with my stuff? You know, why is that so difficult? And then when you really start to think about it, and this has become so much more real to me over the past month. I can't even believe it's been a month. But we go to all of these outside sources. We go to our Claire's and our Terry's and our Amber's and, and, and all of this. Amber, shut I don't go to myself. That'd be weird. Uh, I was referring to you, not me. Um, we go to all of these outside sources. And at the very most, the biggest thing you guys can do is pray. So the biggest thing you can do is talk to God. So why not just skip the middleman and go straight there myself? You know what I mean? I mean, I'm still asking you guys to pray and I want to pray for you and all of that, but he is truly the only one who can comfort. He is the only one who can heal. He is the only one who can bring peace and restoration and, and restore lives. Why are we going to all of them? preaching a sermon, sorry, but it just, it's something that I have felt so much conviction for over the past couple of weeks, um, that my focus needs to be more on God and more on Jesus and less on, y'all don't throw stones here, but less on plexus <laughs> and less on things and less on, I got, I got on the, um, diamond page i may have told some of y'all this just a couple days after Allie's death maybe um maybe a day or two before her funeral i think i think claire you were here i know you were you or christy was here someone was here maybe y'all were both here i don't know and um it was like seven o'clock in the morning i'd been up since 4 a.m and i got on the diamond page did a facebook live and i said i know it's god want me to talk to y'all because I look like crap right now and I don't want any of y'all to see me, but I'm doing this anyways. And I basically looked at them and said, like, what are we doing? We have been given this huge platform. Um, and I think you guys kind of get this even as rubies and senior rubies and plexus, you go to these events, people look at your name tag and they're like, Ooh, she's Ruby. And Ooh, that's where I want to be. And, and all of this. And it only escalates the, the big, okay. You, you get on an elevator. This literally happened at leaders retreat. People weren't even speaking to me. Like they were having their own personal conversation. All of a sudden, they see my name tag. They're like, oh, my gosh, you're Diamond. Oh, my gosh. Da, da, da. And it was like, I want to be your best friend. And I'm like, I don't think I know you. Like, this is super weird. And I said that on this Facebook Live of we go to these events, and you sit there and wonder, am I a rock star? And I didn't know it. Like, this is super weird. People are wanting to take pictures and do all of this. And sometimes it becomes so easy to just soak it all in and be like, check me out. Um, and I said something about, I know I told Terry this, I said something about, um, you know, we've been given so much, we've earned so much with our, with our compensation plan and, um, something to the effect of, you know, and it's great. We can go buy our Louis Vuittons and everybody loves a great Louis, but we can be doing so much more. And then I basically kind of gave a little invitation um, and I, and I left them with, I want our theme this year as diamonds and plexus to be, don't waste your diamond, um, do something big with it. And within like a couple of hours, um, Allison Barreau, who I'm we're recording, but this will stay with us. I don't know if she's a believer. Um, and my, my prayers are with her. she made this graphic. Don't waste your diamond, Amber Livesey. And it is what is on the diamond page right now. And it's being talked about, about different ways that we can do different things like building orphanages and, and reaching out. And you know, Jonathan and I have already talked about something that we want to do once the gym gets built in Allie's name, it's something that we personally want to do. And I just feel like no matter where you're at in this business, 
um, in Plexus, if you're just getting started, you still have a platform and people are watching you and you have that Facebook profile and let's use it for more. I know I'm being recorded and I'm a diamond ambassador, but let's use it for more than just a pink drink. <laughs> um, like I'm, I'm just, I'm so convicted about this and I know that I know that I know that it is because of this. It is because of Allie and her little life. I know that that's why Jana and I are both diamonds. I know it is. We have this platform. Um, I know that this is why God chose our family. Um, not just because of me and Jana, because Steve's a police officer and on the SWAT team. And y'all saw all those cops that are at the funeral. And my dad is the evangelist known all over the place. And that's probably why 20,000 people were watching this thing. Like, I know that that's why... And it's even hard for me now to say that God chose our family for this because there are moments when I'm going, why are you doing this to my family? But I just, I want to do more and I want to be more for the Lord. And I, sorry, I've preached a total sermon and now maybe I should give him another invitation like I did on the thing, but um, I'll stop talking now and let someone else talk. I told Claire and Terry, I'm going to let y'all run these calls. And then I'm just like, <laughs> Claire and I are like, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Right. <laughs> Can't you relinquish control? Um, I think mean, that's perfect, Amber. I mean, that is exactly this whole lesson. Mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't, just because we understand, it doesn't make it any easier. And yeah, absolutely. And, and like you said, the platform that we have, you know, I've often heard it said, you know, you know, anybody that knows me very well knows how much of a big OSU homer I am. And I mean, I'll be the first to cheer loud and go freaking crazy over my cowboys in public. And do I do that for Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, and now it's like, okay, everybody knows how much I love Plexus. Do I shout from the mountaintops about Jesus? Man, I sure have been convicted in the last since January 7th. Mm -hmm about what, I mean, I, I remember when we went and ate, oh, where were we at IHOP, I think, and we were eating late that night, and those kids, as we were walking out, they even said something to you about, you're mm -hmm. Allie's aunt, and you mentioned to them, it's like, do you know Jesus, and it's like, I want to ask every single stranger I know, do you know Jesus, mm -hmm. but a month ago, I wouldn't have done that, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I do it a lot now, but it sure has... Mm -hmm made me realize the urgency and the importance of mm -hmm. what the platform is that we have that we need to be sharing. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't know why it has to be such an awkward question and such an awkward conversation. And really there's a lot of parallels there with Plexus because we're taught with Plexus build relationships. You know, it's a, it's relationship marketing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so is Jesus. It's all about relationships. Um, those people, those kids at IHOP, and I vaguely remember that, if they had been complete and total strangers and not said a word to me, I probably wouldn't have turned around and be like, y'all know Jesus, enjoy your pancakes. Um, but the fact that they knew that I was Allie's aunt, that set up this kind of... A door to walk through. Uh, yeah. And honestly, I did that all night long at that visitation as I was talking to those kiddos. Um, and there's a couple of them that told me yes, but when I looked at them, it was like, I asked them a couple times and I'm praying for them. Like I'm really praying over them. When we're not recording anymore, I'll give you a specific one to pray over. Um, but I just, I don't know why it has to be such a weird, awkward question of, do you know Jesus? It, it, um, it doesn't and it shouldn't. Yeah. But, oh. Anyway, I know. Anyway, amen and amen. Pass the plate. <laughs> Amber Sheffield, I'm with you. I got to finish reading too. I uh, was going to read more last night and Sarah Beth texted and said, I want to sit in the hot tub with you and how can I resist? So we went over there and so if you want to stop recording now, Terry, and then let's share some prayer requests if y'all want. Are y'all, did anybody else have a, I swear I'm running this call now.